Today, we assemble our CNC router. East Wing Vintage Woodworking. Welcome back everyone. So which CNC router did we purchase? Well, there are a ton of options on the market, but we chose the Shapoko Pro XXL from Carbide 3D. Why? The Carbide 3D has exceptional customer service and technical support, and all of their machines are made right here in the USA. I love the quality and the robustness of their products, and the included software that's always being updated by the Carbide 3D team at no extra cost to you, the end user. Every machine comes with a 30-day you-break-it, they-replace-it guarantee, and an additional benefit is the Carbide 3D Makers community which also includes access to Cut Rocket, a website dedicated to Shapoko users with access to complete projects to get you up and running quickly. Again, I want to thank you for tuning into our channel. And if you're enjoying the content, please do me a huge favor, smash that like button, subscribe, and click that notification bell for future videos. Now let's get started. The package arrived approximately two weeks after I ordered it, and everything was packed in a very nice way so nothing would get damaged during shipping. Another thing that was nice was how all the individual boxes were labeled in a manner that corresponded with the order in which you were to put the machine together. In case you didn't know, there are plenty of YouTube videos out there on how to assemble this machine. I'll put a couple of links up in the description uh, if you want to check them out. In some of the videos that are out there, they mention that Carbide 3D did not provide any written instructions. In some more recent videos, there's mention of the manufacturer having assembly videos on their website to refer to. Now, in my case, Carbide 3D provided this detailed booklet on how to assemble the machine. It's very well written and very descriptive. Overall, it made for an easy assembly. This video is going to be a little less descriptive than most. However, I will chime in in some spots to drop a few tips that'll make your life a little bit easier if you decide to purchase a Shapoko Pro. Enough yapping from me. Let's get started. I want to point out that every part was made with the highest quality. Everything fit as exactly as intended. There wasn't a single situation of misaligned threads or parts that didn't square up properly. Just in case you may have forgotten, this is exactly what to expect when you buy things made in the USA. I didn't have any issues during assembly. However, if you run into a problem, Carbide 3D provides a customer service number. Give them a call and one of their technicians can walk you through any situation you're dealing with. This built-in bit setter is another feature that helped me in my decision to go with the Pro model. This feature really makes your life a lot easier when it comes to projects that require multiple bit changes.
As you can see by watching me assemble this, it looks pretty tedious, and there are a plethora of parts and screws. Jefe, what is a plethora? Why, Wapo? Well, you told me I have a plethora, and I just would like to know if you know what a plethora is. I would not like to think that a person would tell someone he has a plethora and find out that that person has no idea what it means to have a plethora. Assembling this machine for some people may seem a bit intimidating, but personally, I've never done anything like this before. I just followed the included instructions and referenced some of the videos that Carbide 3D published. It's a lot easier than it looks, and the added benefit is that you know every aspect of your machine. So when it comes time to perform routine maintenance, or if you need to make a simple repair, you know exactly what to do. When it comes to assembling the drive belts, it can be a bit tricky to figure out how much tension to apply. So the best advice is that when you feed the belt through the provided buckles, take up enough slack so that the buckle has just a little gap between it and the frame. Place the provided screw through the frame. Now you'll know that the buckle is the right distance away if you can just about barely get the first couple of threads of the screw to grab it. It may take you a few tries and it could be a bit tricky but just be patient and mindful not to over-tension your belts. Over-tensioning your belts could possibly damage one of your step motors. Now the next day and a good portion of the machine has been assembled. It's now time to install all the wiring. These wiring chains were an amazing feature for cable management. Now just be sure that before you mount them, you line up the ends properly, matching male to female connectors.
Here we are mounting the spindle. Whether you use your own palm router or one purchased through Carbide 3D, be sure to seat the spindle all the way into the collar till it bottoms out. One thing I'd like to point out about the Carbide 3D router, it comes with a super long power cord. This makes your life a lot easier when it comes to cable management, you know, having enough cord to run entirely through the provided wiring chain. Most CNC routers do not come with a spoil board or some sort of bed option. Other manufacturers do provide them, but you have to pay extra for that option during your purchase. With Carbide 3D Shapoko Pro, your purchase price comes with this feature included. I've done the research and can confirm that after you pay for the option with other manufacturers, your overall purchase price is generally higher than the Shapoko Pro. An added benefit of having a built-in bed is it adds rigidity to your machine and also helps in making it perfectly square. The bed is made entirely out of extruded aluminum and very high quality. The spoil board is made entirely out of 3 quarter inch MDF. It too is very rigid and easy to replace. Entering into the home stretch here with the last part, installing the control board and connecting all of the wiring. Installing the wiring in the control board is not as difficult as it looks. All of the wires and the control board are very well labeled and most of the wires connectors are made to fit in designated areas on the control board. So it would be pretty difficult to screw it up. Here we are connecting the wiring harnesses to all the stepper motors. Again, each wire is labeled according specifically to its proper designation. X, Y, and Z. In addition, Carbide 3D made it easy by utilizing matching male and female connectors, which also help in making sure you connect everything up correctly. I hope you enjoyed the video. This was a fun experience for me and it made me happy to share it with you. Again, please hit that like button as it helps with YouTube's algorithm. And by the way, 
You're always welcome to leave a comment. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to do my best to answer them for you. Links to Carbide 3D's website and our Etsy store are in the description below. And in our next video, we're going to build the enclosure for the Shapoko Pro. And we're also going to show you all the modifications we made to the entire setup. So please take care and see you next time on East Wing Vintage Woodworking.